Right, we are here the 10th of January. Is it the 11th for you, Medina? Yes. <laughs> oh, so it's already my husband's birthday tomorrow. It's my husband's Aww. birthday the 11th. So in Australia, it's already his birthday. Not that I'm doing anything special for it. Hey ho. <laughs> so I've mentioned it here. So just just saying there's enough, enough, Catherine. I know. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to let him have a special cuddle with the guinea pigs. What more could he do for your birthday? So, before we get into our lovely conversation, how are you both doing? How are you doing, Bryce? Good. Crazy times we're living in. Crazy, crazy times on a personal and uh, thing. So, you might uh, don't, well decide whether you want to share some of that. Oh, um, uh, yeah, my someone tried to hack into my YouTube channel last night multiple times. <laughs> um, thank you, Google, for blocking that. Um, I woke up with a bunch of uh, rem- oh, things on my phone asking for me to enter in numbers to uh, verify, and I have two different emails that back up, and I had a bunch of alerts. Um, I know exactly what country it came from, um, not the United States. And it was an old password that was being used that I recently had changed about what, like six weeks ago, maybe two months ago that someone was trying to get multiple times. Now, if it was just one time, maybe I would have let it go, but it was multiple times over the course of the night that someone was trying to hack into my YouTube channel. I'm pretty sure I know exactly who it is. Um, and yeah. LOL, well, it didn't work. <laughs> so, <laughs> joke's on you. My channel's yeah, still on. I, I've had some weird <laughs> and wonderful things happening as well. So, what about you, Medina? How are things with you? Well, um, personally, on a personal level, I'm, I'm going quite well. I'm, I'm being really mindful of my physical body at the moment. I, I find that, you know, when I look at all my bodies, my emotional, my spiritual, my mental, my physical, the other three are going quite well, but it's the, my physical body that lags behind. So, um, um, you know, constantly upgrading ways that I can improve my physical health, um, being able to energetically, you know, s- uh, integrate all these higher frequencies that are coming through as well because I'm feeling this shifting happening and, I, and my body has to keep up. <laughs> so, I'm, you know, I, I'm actually getting a... Um, a lady to come and work with, me with strength training this week. So she's starting with me this week. So that's exciting. And um, I bought a cold pressed um, juicer so I can cold press, you know, juices. And and they come out really, really beautiful with a cold pressed juicer. So yeah. that's that's really positive. And, um, you know, I do things like I've got my uh, nanosoma. I don't know if people have heard of that. This is fantastic. Um, and my Healy, I've got a Healy device as well which I use so all these physical things <laughs> there we are and um so my, my my little physical body is just um you know having an upgrade at the moment so <laughs> I'm trying to really nurture and look after that you know you can actually talk to your body like it's a person and say what 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 do you need right now and and your body will talk to you it has its own intelligence mm-hmm. and um it's going yeah come on up up the ante <laughs> yeah. do more at the minute we were talking about that before we came on a bit and it was interesting I can always remember having a chat with my dad and saying how we've moved into a society where we feel we have to go to a club to do things and when you look at the human anatomy and what we're designed to do I mean I do a lot of this in my work because I work with animals and one of the the main things I work with with humans and their animals is looking at the environment that the animals have evolved to live in and how we can replicate that as much as possible whilst keeping them reasonably safe, which is another area we're going to talk about today. Um, And because, you know, for any time you're bringing another species into a human environment, it comes with certain challenges with it. And it's fascinating how much we've moved away from doing things that we don't have to pay for. So, you know, like I spent a lot of time and I get very fit just by looking after my animals every day. And not only does that then get me out in nature, but it also gets me moving an awful lot all throughout the day rather than just for one hour a day, for example. And chopping wood, we've been chopping wood this weekend and gardening and all the things that sort of were designed to do that we don't necessarily have to pay and go to a sports club to do. It's fascinating, isn't it? I mean, obviously, everyone's lifestyle is different, but there's so many simple things you can do, even day to day cleaning and things like that, walking instead of getting in the car 
that can make a huge difference, can't they? Yeah, for sure. Well, I think too, especially here in America, and I think a lot of the Western world is very similar this way. In a lot of ways, we've been so spoiled. I remember being a little kid and sitting in church one Sunday and the pastor was talking about the Lord's prayer and how, you know, it says, give us Lord our daily bread. And now we're like, please, God, let me resist the bread. You know, we're just so abundantly provided for in our, in our world that, that we now view exercise almost like it's a, um, a punishment in order to look and appear a certain way. And I grew up, my, my mother was always doing like Richard Simmons jazzercise and always going on diets. And so I kind of grew up, I think as a child of the eighties, that was a big thing back then, the low fat diets, weight watchers, all that kind of stuff. Um, but when I started uh, really going deep into traditional yoga, that's when my perception of exercise actually changed. And I saw it as this time to explore your body and to see how powerful and magical your body actually is. You have everything you need inside of you. You have all these muscles. You yeah. are provided with everything, energetically, spiritually, physically. And part of a, what exercise does for a lot of people is it helps them become grounded in their body and then attuned to what's happening in their body. Um, and the, the yoga sutras does talk about like, first you're, you're looking at dealing with the gross body, which is just your physical body. So many people are living outside of their body. And then all of a sudden you start to become aware of these like subtle things happening. And then it connects to your breath and the inhale of creating energy through the inhale with the exhale kind of deflates a little bit and it reaches different energetic points of the body. It becomes this like magical time. And I'm hoping as we like move forward that people will stop like a you know, going to the gym to try to punish themselves to get yeah. a particular size gene and actually use that time. If you're going to a gym or if you're doing something, use that time to explore the abilities that your body actually has that you were born with. Does that make sense? Mm. Oh, yes, yes. And uh, your body is such a um, expression of Mother Earth too. So um, it's, it's like um, another... Um, form of Mother Earth. So when you when you're working with your body, you can think of yourself as a Mother Earth as well. And and your body has this cellular memory where every part of every cell, every part of your body, every atom has a, a like a consciousness. Yeah. And so you know when you when you work with different parts of the body, you're triggering different consciousness, and you're able to release um, stored information. Mm -hmm connect to your own universal wisdom or that sort of thing so that it's such a magical incredible thing the body that is so um, misunderstood and 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 it has such a depth of um information for us and and it actually wants us to have an open communication channel with it so that we um can chat to it and and, and it can um really um tell us what it needs it's so true and equally with you know the sort of the animals in our lives are always trying to tell us that as well and like anything whether it's physical sp spiritual emotional if you ignore those signs the messages come stronger and stronger and stronger and I um quite a few years ago now got into my body reacts in certain quite predictable ways often to stress um, stress and lack of sleep and then what I realized is you can really just like you were saying Medina really talk to your body and so if for example I, I'm quite prone to headaches if I'm stressed mm -hmm. and then if they then speak to my body if I get a headache and ask it what the message is what message am I not getting I get that message straight away and then when I tell my body that thank you I've got the message it doesn't need to tell me anymore it does go and it works it's amazing Unless it's giving me a message that I'm resistant to, and then it might take a bit longer. <laughs> but you know, it's just incredible, you know, and people, I've shared this with other people, and some people are really, really sceptical and just don't be so ridiculous. But from personal experience, it's so, so powerful, and it works every time for me. And are you I love the little prayer. Oh, sorry, Bruce. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> We're also keen to chat about this. Um, I, I love the little prayer. Um, Dear body, I love you. Uh, I appreciate you. I honour you. Um, thank you for being in perfect health. And, 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 you know, this, you know, little prayer that you can say to your body all the time. And it's if you say it out loud, it's like a really uh, affirmation, I guess, that, mm. that your body is listening to. And, um, yeah, it's helpful. <laughs> 
And have you ladies heard of, I know I've maybe spoken about this occasionally, but the Ayurvedic system of the body dosha, the body dispositions. Yeah. That, and that's what a lot of people in the West don't understand that each and every one of us have a different composition of energy in our body. And this, this will de- dictate some of your personality traits as well as your physicality. And those different uh, compositions and dispositions of body require different forms of action. And when you start to actually feed your body off of this system, this old ancient system, what balances it, 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 for me, it changed my life. It changed the way I ate. It changed the way I viewed exercise. I understood the pitfalls because of certain dispositions. And in, at least in America, everyone has this like weird idea that one size fits all when it comes to like movement. And that's just not, that's not the case. You know, for me, like for, for my dosha, I'm a vata pitta. My leading is vata. That's why I'm very bony. That's why I have a lot of, but that's the kind of the vata. Um, and so I have to worry about like stretching into my tendons and not my muscle. Like you can start to, anyway, it's just, it's very fascinating when you start. And a lot of women who are like kappa women, I next life, I want to be kappa because they're very buttery and flexible, but they, they tend to gain weight easily. And so a lot of women who are kappa want to be vata, but vatas want to be kappa. And it's like, but when you start working with what you are and the elements of nature that correspond to that, because vata is air, pitta, fire, um, uh, kappa, like earth, water, um, then you can like actually balance yourself. And that goes with food as well. You know, as a vata, I crave vata foods, which is like fruits, uh, salads, anything that grows up, but that's not what I should be eating because I have too much vata. So I have to eat like grounded root vegetables. I have to eat kappa foods to then balance out my body energy. And it literally changed my life. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping as we watch the matrix crumble, that these old ancient teachings that our ancestors knew about will come to the mm. forefront. You know, that reminds me of looking at the blood types as yep. well. You know, for example, the, the A blood type is not one that, um, digests or integrates meat products very well right. and and it, they say it can lead to cancer because mm-hmm. um the body just can't break it down so yeah that's another way of um really going into the the body um the the body intelligence and finding out what what it uh, aligns with yeah it's fascinating I yeah i like everything we talk about you know in general with what's going on in that you know we've we've had so many conversations the three of us with each other and other people about really tuning into your intuition your gut feel etc but when your your body's giving you feedback all the time and i was just on a call before this with a lovely company that i i work with a lot because their products are so amazing and we were really diving deep into gut health which is a major major issue and every single animal that I work with has got major imbalances in their gut because of all the toxins, because of the inappropriate food that they're fed, because of the stress that we put them under, because we make lifestyle decisions for them that aren't in their best interest and aren't suited to that species. And when you look after your gut, um, whatever that might mean, and that's a whole probably seminar in itself, But when you look after that, then your gut feel, your intuition starts giving you the right messages because we all know whether you're using any tool, whether it's a pendulum, whether it's cards, whether it's your intuition, whatever it might be, you can get that that message can be corrupted Mm -hmm. if that tool isn't cleansed and healthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the same with our bodies. If we don't keep our bodies as cleansed as healthy, we don't need to be perfect. We just need to be aware when things are going off kilter so that we can do a course correct. Yeah. I'm finding that as as the energies are shifting and we're moving into these, you know, more and more ascension, um, that your body needs less and less food. And yeah. it's, it's telling you to just, you know, cut way back. And, you know, one one meal a day for me pretty much is enough. And personally, and if I have too much more than that, I just feel really bloated and really heavy. And, you know, this is a real shift from when I was young where, you know, you'd have regularly, you know, three meals a day and then you'd still potentially be hungry. But th- this real energetic shift in, in what our bodies are, are needing, it's because we're, changing the, the the crystalline cellular structure of, of our um, anatomy as 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 everything shifts and so also the liquid diets are becoming much more um 
sort of suitable for our bodies as well, you know, organic, you know, fruits and vegetables and um, in, in liquid form, you know, that smoothies and things. So um, that, that's a really noticeable shift. And so many people I, I talk to talk about that, how that they can't eat the same amounts that they maybe even ate, you know, six months ago. So it's, that's really interesting. And a lot of that is because, because this is, I, I glitched to what this is, a, I, this is my day two world. I love it so much. A lot of it is because a lot of the food that we're consuming isn't real food anymore. And it's so toxic because of the way it's processed, the way the products that are used during the germination, the growing, the harvesting, the packaging, even when it's on the supermarket shelves and our bodies. So when, like you were saying, um, Medina, when you, you juice things, if your gut is in a submultiple health and, and virtually every person's and animals are, when you put it in a liquid format, you take the strain off the body having to assimilate and that those products into your body. It makes it a lot easier. And I think, as you say, energetically, as we're all shifting, that fits the pattern so well, doesn't it, in terms of what we're looking to do and not make life difficult for ourselves because at the moment, a lot of the time, our major organs do because we overconsume so much, so much. Yeah. I mean, when I wasn't very well over Christmas, I was saying to you both, I think last week or the week before, my appetite went down, but it's because normally I overconsume because everything's so readily available. I'm lucky enough to live in a country and a part of the country and have an income where I can more or less eat what I want when I want. And yeah, therefore, it, could, it could be changing very quickly, Catherine. It is. Well, it, it already is over yeah. here, massively so. The, the inflation yeah. prices are so ridiculous now. But also the shelves are getting empty now here. You know, I'm noticing that with these um, food in Australia here, with the uh, food chain supply issues that are happening and, and whether they're manipulated or not, I saw an article saying that they were stashing stuff up in the supermarkets in the back because they weren't allowed to, to stock everything on the shelves. But they're getting emptier and emptier. So it's like, um, you know, well, we're going to have to address these issues of overconsumption and, 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 and also our attachment to food emotionally you know what it does for us emotionally you know when we're feeling really awful I, I, I personally you know I've gotten the habit from when I was little my mum would make a cup of tea every time she felt bad and so you know you, that that sort of subconscious attachment that you have to feel better by by having that cup of tea when when something goes wrong or you're feeling stressed and you know we do that on so many levels with with food and and with all the central aspects of the body you know people are really having to to deal with any t form of dependencies or addictions now yeah no i you know down here in the south we have what's called soul food mm. you no know? and um and that's a big part of our culture down here is to have these big like sunday lunches the, everything's fried um and that's how a lot of people show their love down here in the south is like my grandfather was one of these people every time i went to my, my not my grandmother it was my grandfather he constantly wanted to feed you it was constantly a need for him to feed you. And that was the way he showed his love. And I know a lot of people associate food with that kind of family community, family meals, all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and it's confusing the, uh, the action of eating with the sharing of love. You know, mm. it's, that's what you're missing was that, that family dinner table, you know, especially, I mean, I feel like my generation was the very last generation to kind of actually have a proper childhood because we didn't have cell phones or internet. Yeah. You know, I think I was like the last cut off before that actually happened. So we played outside, we had family meals, there was not, you know, we sat at the dinner table as a family on Sundays, it was it was not uh, what it is now, where everyone's on an iPad or an iPhone. Um, and so but looking back on that, yeah, it, it, it was the commute, it was having that relationship with people. Um, and and that I think is what but again, of course, there are oh, I'm sitting here thinking about there are cultural things like we drink a lot of we don't, if you ask a southerner, what they think a glass of tea is, they're going to tell you iced tea, sweet tea, mm -hmm. and ice. Cause that's what we drink down here. And like my grandmother was from South Georgia. So she would make her sweet tea with like pineapple juice and like all the sugar, you know, real sugar, real, you know, drop biscuits, which for us biscuits are like, they're not cookies. They're like um, bread, you know, yeah. they, they drop the dough and cook it. And, um, and so there is kind of that. And I think, I do think, especially when things get stressful and people go into a place of sadness or loneliness, 
they're trying to get back to a place of happiness and they'll go and take the cup of tea or the cookie mm. or go make a, a casserole their mom did just to feel better instead of actually dealing with the issue of being sad or lonely as it as it's presented itself to you through your body through your emotions if that makes sense yeah because yeah. it's right back to your survival instincts obviously food and water and shelter are keep mm. our key survival instincts so anytime you feel those stress levels go up that's mm. what your body kicks back into and now of course we evolved into well whether you believe in evolution or not that's a whole other discussion <laughs> But who knows we've at this point? <laughs> species for of however many strands of DNA we've got in a time where we actually had to go and forage for our food. Just like if you look now, if I watch my horses and everything, you know, they were designed to move huge amounts of time because they're not designed to be in a field of one species of grass. And we're not designed to not move. We're designed to listen. And this again, self selection, zoo pharmacognosis, self medicating all your different body types depending on the stresses that your mind or body are going through we would go and naturally seek out different foods clays lichens all sorts of foods and herbs so foods for substance growth and reproduction but also medicinal herbs for actually healing our mind and body and soul but because now we can just sit there and order it online or go to the supermarket and get it we've cut out that essential bit, which then comes back to the physical health. So it's fascinating how these modern lifestyles and look at what they're trying to do now with virtual reality, you know, you'll, you, they'll just plug you into the internet of things and you'll imagine it and it will arrive on your plate or, or you won't even need to eat it because they'll be feeding it into you some other way sort of thing. But That's it, why I love the Anastasia books because she would just, Anastasia would just go and pick a berry that she needed at the time that she needed it as she lived in the Russian forest. And, you know, it, it takes us back to all that. And um, as you were talking then, you were talking about past lives and I remembered um, a past life. I have a, a subconscious cellular memory of when I was in India and I was only young and I was, you know, scavenging for food. And um, I, I lived a pretty short life in that life because, um, you know, I, I died of starvation. So, you know, I, I have a memory of that there in the background. And, you know, many of us have had so many lifetimes that, that you know, we have all these cellular memories. And, and so, um, you know, there, there, there's all these subconscious patterns and triggers that we're also dealing with that we don't necessarily consciously uh, recognise or understand. It's like people yeah. who grew up in the Great Depression or who had grand, well, we didn't grow up in the Great Depression, but had like grandparents that grew up in the Great Depression. And all of a sudden, like you had to clean your plate. Like it wasn't an option to leave food behind. Like that, that, that trauma was in them of you have to clean your plate, everything, mm -hmm. because you don't know what, what if that happens again and we don't have food. You know, it's so funny when I was a little kid talking about scavenging for food. Do you guys have honeysuckles in England or Australia? So we did. Down here in the <laughs> south, as kids, we used to go pick the honeysuckles. And for those that don't have honeysuckles, it's like this little flower you pick and you can pull part of it out. It has little drip drops of like nectar. That's really, but we used to do that all the time as kids on the, on the playground. At school, we go pick honeysuckles. And for years, that was okay. Then at one year, our teacher got really upset because of pesticides. Like, were mm -hmm. they spraying it? But you think about that as kids. I was like, God, we used to just do that. We used to just go pick honeysuckles. That was normal for us down here to do out at our house. It's everywhere here. And then all of a sudden now we've been told not to do that because they're spraying all the, the plants. But it is natural. That is natural for human beings to want to go and pick from, from nature. I used to eat sour grass. It was long and it was sort of a little bit sour, but it was really nice to eat. And I would notice that the, the, our dogs would go and eat it as well, you know. And, and so you'd see what, what the animal goes to eat and then, and then it's okay to eat. <laughs> it's very, very true. I mean, my son was born and he, right from being a toddler, he could always self-medicate. And when he used to come out on the horses with me, he'd be sitting there as a tiny toddler and just helping himself. And he never got it wrong. He never got it wrong in terms of what he could eat and what it was safe to eat and what it what it wasn't. It was amazing, absolutely amazing. And this brings me on to another subject that we were going to talk to about today, about sort of free choice and free will. Because I've heard a lot of really interesting, fascinating discussions about this regarding to the current situation that's going on. And from both extreme sides of the argument about um 
how a lot of people, their definition of free will is what they want to happen. <laughs> and the other side are wrong and shouldn't be allowed free will. And also with the children, like Medina, we were, you were just saying that in mm. Australia, which we've already mm. got in other countries, the younger children yeah. now are um, being wanting to yes. have this. Five to 11-year-olds started yesterday. They're trying yeah. to really push that at the moment. Mm. And, and, and in no way, um, you know, so at, at what age, but <clears throat> both young and old, um, different species, you know, I don't let my animals have free will because we've got a road outside the house. Yeah. So if I let my dogs go anywhere they wanted to, there would be human environment things that could cause them significant danger. Mm -hmm. um, so what has this last year taught you two about free will? Uh, well, as far as consenting, I mean, no means no, regardless of what situation you're in, no means no. But it's interesting. I was, I was saying before we got on that this is something I, I know is a cosmic law and like all levels of life. It's this idea of consent, but at what extent you're right? Because I mean, my dog is a rescue from India and we rescued him at a very, he was a puppy. Now other dogs I've brought back from India, they understand cars. So mm. they're good outside. Ravi, my dog, because he was such a puppy, does not understand cars. And so um, he has a hard time on a leash. Uh, I think he's better off leash. But um, but we cannot, like, obviously in the city, it's a law. He has to be leashed anyway. But we could not let him. If he was let off of a leash, he'd be hit by a car by now. Yeah. Because he just does not understand the what what a car is. Um, but, you know, in, in the one thing I've been... In the Bhagavad Gita, there's this idea of what they call dharma. And I know a lot of people have probably heard this word before. Basically, what dharma is, it's your life plan. It's your life purpose. That we were all born with a template of what we were supposed to do in this life, a soul contract, whatever you want to call it. And so there are certain things that are going to happen to you in your life that you don't really, you already, you chose it, but before you took your body, you just don't remember. And so the concept of the free will then comes down to how are you going to react to the, the obstacles presented to you? How are you going to, if, if they're going to happen anyway, how are you internally going to respond to that? Are you going to lose your shit? Are you going to be able to be calm and cool and collective and learn from it? So that's a whole other perception on free will that we don't really hear much in the Western world of really just how you respond to what you've already agreed to. Does that, does that make sense? I mean, absolutely. Yes, yes. I, I have a great post here on Dharma. Can I share it, Catherine? Yeah. Um, it, it just, I was able to find it. I love, I love that concept of Dharma that you're talking about, Bryce. Um, uh, it, here. I've can you see that? Button. No, we can't. You'll just have to. Oh. Um, uh, is, is it coming up now? Right. Okay. I see it, yes. Yes. So what I really want you to focus on is asking yourself how you can serve humanity and asking yourself what your unique talents are. Because you have a unique talent that no one else has and you have a unique and you have a special way of expressing that talent and no one else has it. So that's that's uh, Deepak Chopra talking about uh, Dharma. And I know there's issues with people talking about Deepak Chopra at the moment, but aside from all that, you know, it's such an interesting concept because that also ties in with free will, doesn't it? Yeah, well, it's Dharma. funny you say that because with the dark players, I've said this on my channel a lot, with the dark players, darkness can't create anything, only light can. So what he's talking about, even if regardless of what your opinions on him is, he's talking about a spiritual principle that was created by the light. So yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Exactly. And, and don't shoot, the, don't shoot the message if you don't like the messenger. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I think that, that happens a lot, actually. And of course, everyone's going through different stages in their life. So I think so many people that are in the public eye, whether they're sports people, whether they're, um, you know, look at Novak Djokovic at the moment with all the controversy about him being let into Australia. And then everyone's showing the pictures of his hand over his eye and everything. And you're like, every person, even when they're in this physical body they're in now, is going through so many different stages. And a part of, we always talk about learning from your mistakes. And, yeah. um, you know, some people don't learn from their mistakes and some people make conscious choices to continue behaving a certain way. But other people 
have to be in a situation to know and then learn something from it. So to make these snap judgments about things, and it's hard not to, given what we've all been going through, but it, it never normally serves us well because you can, as Bryce and I have had quite a few conversations about recently, we all know what assumptions make an arse out of you and me. And it's very, very true. But I think what I found really fascinating and absolutely I've been guilty of it is we talk about free will and we do it, but it's so much more complex than I think um, most people realise. So take an example of perhaps us saying, you know, the mainstream media needs to be taken down because it's giving misinformation. Well, there's such a huge debate just about that in terms of the free will debate yeah. and how much someone actually has free will if they've been mind controlled. Mm. Right? Uh, it, it's, it's so much more complex, isn't it, than a black and white. Given oh, yeah. Nothing is black and white. It's all everything are shades of gray. Everything. In fact, I, I know from my studies in psychology, black and white thinking is a sign of a, a mental issue. Of yeah. mental illness yeah um, when you yeah, snap yeah. to black and white with things that's a that's a sign of a mental illness because most things are shades of gray and that is very interesting i think what that comes down to is um well it comes down to censorship th then right like if we if we allow everything to be freedom of speech to give people that free will then we have to allow everything to be freedom of speech I think there's safety parameters that have to be considered. You know, what, what actually is destructive for humanity? What, what serves humanity? When it comes to a point where something's not safe, I think you have to have firm boundaries. I agree. I was going to come on to the boundaries. So take an example that we've all, we, we will all experience on a daily basis. So when this video goes up, we allow comments on the video. And I will personally, and I know you guys do too, choose to delete certain comments. But by deleting certain comments, you then get comments back by sort of saying, and it doesn't happen very often, I must say, touch wood, quick. Um, but I'm not deleting them because I'm stopping someone having the free will to make it, because anyone can make the comments or not. But I've got the free will as to whether I choose to have that energy yep. on my channel. Um, so it's, it's really, really fascinating. I have thought long and hard about that. Um, but for example, I'm very much the type of person that believes, you know, everything has energy, the words, the thoughts, particularly when you put it down in writing is very powerful sort of energy. So people can write what they want. Um, but I can also choose what I choose to leave there on mine if I want to harbour uh, a certain positive energy for the greater collective, for example. Yeah. Um, and I think this is where I love some of the conversations that I've had David Ike to say. So, like, I love having a healthy debate with people. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean you have to agree with them. You know, we've all had people that we might have spoken to in the cafe, on a public channel, whatever. But you can have that brilliant debate conversation with them and you do not have to agree with each other that's fine yeah what well, we'll learn you're a co-creator and you're steering the direction that you want your universe to go in so if you want to um, absorb your life in negativity then you accept all that negative stuff that's coming towards you and and you allow that to to continue but if you want to steer your life in a direction of you know more positivity and upliftment and things you 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 create um a world around you that uh resonates only in that sort of frequency and vibration and so um i think you're painting a canvas and you have to be mindful of um what you want on that canvas and and the things that you don't want on that canvas you you do have to have firm boundaries with yeah well that's it i know when i take comments down it's usually because there's nothing productive in the comment it's either something very nasty towards me or to somebody else in the comment where there is no constructive criticism. There is no healthy debate. It's just nasty. And that, I, yeah, it's a boundary. I don't want my channel to be a place um, for, I don't think you guys do either, for there to be like, 
just nastiness. You know, that's not mm-hmm. critical thinking skills. I'm all about critical thinking skills. I mean, I, um, I was having a conversation this morning with Liz, uh, who's a big TikToker, and we were talking about um, the fear of being wrong and how we're, I think she was saying where she's moving into a place where she's not afraid of being wrong anymore because that's how you learn. And so yes. it's, you know, we, we need to have that healthy critical thinking debate where we can maybe see things differently and listen to the other person. We're, we're so busy listening to respond that we're not listening to understand sometimes. You know, mm. and, and I know I'm guilty of that. I know I'm totally guilty listening of that. To defend, listening no. to defend your position as opposed to listening to be open to, to hearing more information that might make you have a different way of perceiving the world. And I, I think when you're you're feeling insecure or, or in self-esteem, then you, then you have a tendency to want to um, defend your own beliefs and your own systems, and, and that is going to be counterproductive. <laughs> yeah. Do you think also one of the things is all of these sort of universal laws like free choice, free will, they don't sit in isolation either. They sit with the other universal laws as well. So, for example, of do no harm to others, which is actually a really tricky one because even if you're vegan, you're still eating in the plants. So, you know, where do you take it to? But I think the other thing sometimes where we get into a tricky situation from a human perspective, because we're working so much from here rather than necessarily in balance between the heart and head, is none of these things are meant to be used in isolation. You know, so they're meant to be used with healthy boundaries. They're meant to be used in terms of, you know, doing no harm and, and, and contributing to the world in a good way. So when you take anything in isolation, it could be misconstrued, do you think? Yes, mm. absolutely. You know, it's funny you were saying that about like vegans eating plants and um, in the law of one, the raw material, they talk about the laws of forgiveness mm. and that the spiritual realm has different, they take each person's existence and they take into account the timeline you're on and what is culturally acceptable into mm. your built up karma. So they, they have mm. these laws of forgiveness. So like they talk about eating, like I'm a vegetarian, I've been a vegetarian for a very long time. However, because I, like we all do, we come from a Western world where meat is a part of our diet. They don't hold eating meat against Westerners like they would against somebody who is maybe raised in India because mm. the culture in India is 80% yes. vegetarian. So even the universe doesn't hold these laws in isolation. They consider the bigger picture when evaluating yeah your what you your karma your work in that that i mean even i mean laws of forgiveness too this blew me away so like and i'm the person if i have an insect in my house i will go pick it up in paper and put it outside especially before my dog gets to it because my dog's a little serial killer with uh with insects so i have to get it out before he gets to it but um but even if you're like walking through the woods are you looking down and making sure you're not stepping on ants Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah that's Fantastic point. That's a fantastic point. I think that each each person's individual um, consciousness is taken into account for for what they're actually um, understanding. So if you if you do something that's maybe in some way harmful to the universe, but you're not you're not consciously aware that that's the case, that's evaluated differently from somebody who is aware that they're doing something wrong. And 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 so that yeah, that's a brilliant point. And I also think there's a, such a thing as um, a karmic. Um, uh, credit system it's like a bank balance <laughs> and you and you know you attain through your you know universal service to humanity your service to others you're able to build up a karmic uh sort of like a credit and 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 so that's taken into account or your, or your karmic debt <laughs> if you're if you're not on, on on track with um you know um being benevolent in the universe so yeah all those things i think are, are considered and um that, that, that's really important when, when you're moving forward in the world uh, being aware of all that you know um, that that you you, you you are being seen on higher levels and you, you, your soul is, is is actually watching itself so yeah. it's evaluating itself at the same time <laughs> yeah I know this is so much with animals because um, you know we all make decisions with the best awareness of, well a lot of people make decisions <laughs> with the best of the awareness oh, oh. Of the time. <laughs> And then you learn something and you just think, oh, my God, what was I thinking? I didn't realize that. And 
you know, I, I had a, a huge awakening when I learned, you know, I, for years I was a vegetarian. And by the way, folks, before you bash it, there is a huge difference between uh, a healthy eating vegetarian and Bill Gates beyond burgers or whoever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm not talking about processed man-made plastic food. But then someone told me about dairy cattle and, of course, how most, not all, there are some ethical ones, but how most dairy And I was like, how did I not realise this? You know, I'm a woman. I've breastfed my children. How did I not put two and two together? I just didn't think of it. I didn't ask the question. Yeah. We've spoken on numerous occasions about how important it is to keep questioning things. So, for example... You know, when I'm uh, people with their animals, most people wouldn't have an animal unless they really love them. Right. But we often make bad decisions. I've had some some discussions with mutual friends of ours this week about dog starts, for example, and dogs need my I dog, bet, my dog, <laughs> to humans because anatomically and physically they're designed to eat different things. So for example, they can't process carbohydrates the same way we can. So, but the difference is, is you hope that when you learn something that you make that change and most people and animals and nature in the universe are really forgiving to that. I find yeah. that, you know, so long as you sort of, as your awareness shifts, your behavior shifts, then mm. I think it's a win, win, win situation. And everyone's well, happy. I have to plug you, Catherine, because you literally have saved my boy, my boy, Ravi, because he has had, he's had just this is your commercial break for Catherine. <laughs> She's so amazing. No, my dog has had so many issues since we got him from India because of with allergies. And we've gone through so many different foods, um, so many, and he just he gets ear infections. And we, we were studied all the different food products. And I talked to Catherine yesterday and she sent me some stuff and to start making him some food because I can tell when he is actually feeling better, he's happier, he's more playful. And I think that's the most, my father is a veterinarian growing up. And honestly, to tell you the truth, he always diagnosed us before the human doctors did, because like Catherine, like a lot of veterinarians, animals can't tell you where it hurts. They can't mm -hmm. really tell you, you have to figure, well, yeah, I know you can communicate with animals, but you have to kind of figure it out. And mm -hmm. Catherine knew right away what was going on with, with Robbie. And so I am going to plug her. So you guys should totally check out her businesses because she knows what she's talking about. So, <laughs> and, and also you, you can do uh, energy healing on him too. So yeah. working, going in energetically and seeing, um, tuning into, uh, what, what he's, um, what his issues are um, on that sort of personality level or, you know, on that emotional, um, mental, um, spiritual level and um, do some work on that and just send him. He had him Reiki um, once. He had Reiki one time. Yeah. Came How home. did he go? <laughs> he was so hyper. He like ran up the walls. I was like, and it was, it was right before bedtime too. So I was like, Oh God, uh -huh. <laughs> oh <my> God. <laughs> next time we're going to do early in the morning. <laughs> so he went, well, it obviously worked. Like, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But I tell you guys, like you guys, I'm going to, when I post this on my channel, I'm going to put Catherine, I'm going to put your links down below because, um, Catherine, oh, but... yes. Talk about Dharma. Like that's obviously. Talk about Dharma. Talking. Yeah, it is. And I, I just, um, I love all these discussions because you sort of, I have all these questions in my head and I think I know who I can talk to these about. You guys, <laughs> you guys, because I think it is really, really fascinating to sort of keep questioning these and having these awarenesses because, you know, I, we, we've talked about this before, Bryce, about how when we grew up at school, we were still allowed to have healthy debates about things. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you had to sometimes put forward an argument um, for something you completely disagreed in. But that teaches you critical thinking and uh, to keep an open mind because there's been so many things in my life where with greater awareness I've changed my mind on. And I know there still will be. And I think, especially with what's coming up this year, however much we all think we know, we're go there's going to be so many things that we're absolutely gobsmacked about and people that we might have misjudged and both on both sides, perhaps. I mean, imagine, imagine if we find out that Bill Gates is a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was well, counseling for a year. Well, they say like AOC is actually a good guy, or good yeah. guy and Jen Psaki, that they're both um, incredible actresses. We'll just put it that way. Yeah. And I when mean, I heard that, I was like, what? Like, I was like, that's wild. So, yeah. yeah. You know, it's so funny. So I was, 
when, <laughs> when you think about CGI and, and you know, all the, 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 the advanced level of all the masks and everything like that, it's just, you know, uh, huh, nothing that you're watching these days is seems to be real on any level, although the three of us are. <laughs> yes, no, we're real. We're totally real. Yeah, no mask, no mask. <laughs> One of these days we'll take our masks off and then we'll try. And we'll have to keep our mouth shut because my lizard tongue might come out. So actually, I have started. Mouth. By the way, in all seriousness, I have started a counselling session for all the poor real lizards. Oh, that have been so traumatised. Counselling sessions because, of course, everyone's been so rude about lizards, and I've got friends who've got pet lizards, and they're gorgeous. And oh, owls, I have too. lovely border dragons. They're so yeah. beautiful here where I live. <laughs> they're, they're they're just amazing. So we're not talking about those lizards, all yeah. right? <laughs> Owls, and goats, all the. I can actually touch my tongue to my nose. So <laughs> my lizard. Wow. Can talk. So um, that, was, that was quite a trick when I was in middle school to do. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you and I think too. One thing I don't know if we've talked about this, Catherine, but the the power. I think we, we've talked about the power of I don't know of just being mm -hmm. able to say, I don't know. And I'll tell mm -hmm. you, when I first started studying, before I went to India, I started studying um, with a man named David Grieg up in Philadelphia. And he's one of the like leading teachers when it comes to traditional yoga. The guy is like an incredible chanter. He can just, yeah, I mean, he just knows everything when it comes to philosophy and just one of the best, the, cre the cream of the crop. And I remember sitting in a conference with him and people would ask these really you know, when you were, you're talking about something, any type, anything spiritual, you get people who ask very intense questions, very vulnerable questions. And you'd hear these questions asked and you'd hear his respond and you learn from this. But then I remember one day somebody asked him something and he just looked at the person and said, I don't know. And it was so powerful for me. I was probably in my early thirties at that point, just to hear, or maybe late twenties, actually, just to hear someone that I looked up to as as so experienced and so so knowledgeable to hear him actually say i don't know was so mm. powerful and i didn't yeah. think less of him at all i actually thought more of him for being able yes. to admit like i don't have the answer for you you know and that gave me and, and i think we're the, like people want to always have the answers they always want to be right and you know it's funny while you're talking about debating um when I was in high school, I, we had to have a debate over Dr. Kevorkian and I was assigned the position of supporting him. If you guys don't know who he is, look him up. I don't know if we can talk about everything he's done. And my parents were really against it, but they had, they were obviously were helping me do my side to support what he does. And even to this day, after doing that project, I don't know how I feel about him because mm -hmm. I can see both sides to the argument. There's a lot of gray there. You know, and, and so it, 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 it's, it's okay to say, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about this particular topic because there are so many different, and you also kind of the laws of forgiveness when you can actually think about or listen to what the other person is saying, even if you still don't agree with them, you understand their perspective. And so there's a law mm. of forgiveness there. And that brings your humanity out, your compassion out, because even with your friends, even with your partners, your parents, the people around you, you're not going to agree on everything. But exactly. And everyone's got different less. boundaries, haven't they? Everyone's got different boundaries and they're seeing their world through a completely unique perspective mm -hmm. and not just through their eyes, through what they're feeling, how they're interacting. And, and that will change as you as you grow and evolve as well. I'm laughing because my cat here, as you see, is rolling about like mad on my desk. If my <laughs> computer suddenly goes blank... <laughs> Idris, he is, I mean, he is so stunning. Oh, he? oh he's, he's I've got, yeah, I've got three of them in here with me again. Um, Idris, don't make so much noise. Um, but yeah, so it is, and I've, I've struggled quite a lot throughout this whole debate with the more nefarious characters that we've been talking about in decisions, because I've generally thought, well, my God, if you're born into um, these situations and that your parents have taught you that's what life is all about, at what stage do you wake up from the brainwashing and feel that there's a different choice available to you? And is there always a different choice available to them? Um, and, 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 and who knows if what they're um, giving out into the world is actually 
It could be uh, the, the, the positive people behind the scenes putting it out there to, to shift reality. So you don't even know if that's real anyway. Um, so why waste energy um, hating on something when it could, it could maybe just be an illusion anyway? And, and, and in truth, the, the whole of our earth reality is an illusion yeah. <laughs> when you come yeah. down to it. So at that sort of base level, um, you, you don't want to get emotionally too attached to things especially when you don't really know the full story and you can't really unless you're actually there in person and you can see you you, you just don't know yeah I totally agree with that yeah absolutely it yeah uh, and my best friend I've learned a lot from him my best friend up in Canada he's um he's got such a good sense of humor and for me I've struggled a lot with anxiety and, and catastrophe thinking and that's something that I'm aware of um and that's something he's taught me is and I, I try to kind of channel him sometimes like when something really stressful is going on he'll just crack a joke and he, ne he never takes things so seriously and i and i know some in some spiritual disciplines they say that humor is the highest level of spiritual evolution is to be able to laugh at yourself and laugh at the situation you know and yeah. so and he's taught me a lot of that to be able to like relax a little bit you know it, it's I, just, I saw him you did a video with yeah, him. I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah i did yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, so funny. <laughs> He's so funny. And our teacher in India, you know, where we go in India, it's 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 so like it's hard to get into the school. And when you're there, it's, people take it very seriously, as they should. You're paying a lot of money. Um, it's an education system, but it gets to the point where people get so worked up and he'll just crack a joke. And our teacher loves him. He's like one of our teacher's favorite students. And it's because he's funny and it's because he he laughs at himself and he laughs at situations and that keeps him peaceful. It keeps him very mm -hmm. peaceful when he's that way mm -hmm. because and people enjoy being around him because it's not like you started off with medina is like a laughter releases and it sets off a whole chain of chemical reactions in your body as well that actually yeah. have physical healing and and address all your um hormonal levels and your neurotransmitter levels so everything's all linked together you know mm -hmm. this is the thing you can't separate for any of them and i've had to learn to laugh at myself a lot because my family have been laughing at me for years so <laughs> I saw the funniest thing. I saw the funniest thing where um, they had this um, group of people surrounding this guy, and, and he, the, he was learning how to trust, and he and he was getting really nervous because he didn't know where he was going to, you know, do the drop, you know, and he was he was breathing really heavily, and everyone's going, "You can do this, you can do this," <laughs> and then he dropped, but he went the wrong way. He went forward instead of back, and he just fell. <laughs> And oh my god, I was laughing for like a whole day after that, even though I felt I did feel badly for him. <laughs> but it was so funny because it, the, the crux of the whole thing was him learning to trust. Him and he just fell. Well, you know what? If if the earth, the people aren't gonna gonna catch you, the earth's gonna catch you. So <laughs> he was caught just by Mother Earth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think so many people need so much laughter at the moment, don't they? And yeah. um, and just need it is really, really important. And finding people, you know, what, that you can have that joy or laughter with, and and if not, just tickle yourself <laughs> or get a puppy. <laughs> oh my god, my animals are hysterical, especially dogs. Yeah. I find dogs are comical. They're little comedians. It's so funny. They've got so, so much personality. <laughs> Yeah, I've got I've got more pictures of my children. It's just awful. I've got like 10 year gaps where I've got not a single picture of the children because all of us <laughs> are just obsessed with taking pictures of the animals because they're so cute, they're funny, they're um they're just they adorable. Don't the back. Not what they're doing. And then suddenly you think, oh children, <laughs> two-legged children as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. No, um, I'm the same way. I, I always feel bad when I have to take stuff off my phone. Like, I don't want to delete any pictures of my dog, even if it's like yes. this picture of him sleeping in different places. And it, I feel guilty, like I've like, like I've hurt him in some way. <laughs> so, uh, so this week, then, what were you hoping for for this week? What is your positive? What you know, um, on a personal level and a collective level. Well, I, th I think for me that um, 
I'm going to be focusing not so much on the external of what's going on around me, but I'm, I'm going to really try to upgrade uh, my own life and, and who I am by, by really focusing on um, strengthening my body and, and, and really helping myself in that way. So it, it, it's, it's very constructive because, you know, you feel empowered when you're doing stuff for yourself like that. Um, you know, all this other external stuff, it, it, it's sort of a little bit beyond you. <laughs> so, I mean, you can only do so much. But when, when it comes to yourself, when you're doing things for yourself in that way and, and you feel like you're progressing forward, that's really great. And I mean, I know we don't have to do things to feel good because, again, we don't want to rely on, 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 on that to make us feel good. But in addition to the stuff that I'm already doing to, 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 to stay centred, I think um, working, working, I know that working on my physical is going to be really beneficial for me at the moment, strengthening my body because that will strengthen my mind. And um, also I'm not... Even though I don't attach to age, and I never people say, oh, "How old are you?" I go, oh, I can't remember. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah. I know, I can't. Thousands of times old. That's how old I am. I, I, think, I think it's called selective amnesia. <laughs> yeah. I thought that too. Yeah. But, um, so you know, you know, even though I, you know that is a process that's happening on some level, um, you know, I, I'm aware that you know with everything going on, I need to upgrade my toolkit. And um, so I, I, it's great to be able to, um, I've got heaps of clients, you know, that, that, that I work with, but I also need to be walking the walk and talking the talk myself. <laughs> so that, that's what I'm focusing on this week. And it's not easy for me because some of these things are going to be a bit of a stretch for me that I'm not used to. But um, I'm saying to myself, you know, I can do this. So, yeah. <laughs> and I'm really excited for you. It's really, it's a lovely, it's such, such a treat. What about you guys? Well, I'll tell you guys, I tell my students this all the time. I've been sore for 15 years. So oh. it, it is always <laughs> shifting and changing. Always when you, when you have consistently exercise six days a week for, for that amount of time. And I'm always sore because the body is always changing. And there's yeah. something I love that you talked about the street training. I was telling my, uh, we had a, a started a course last night and it, with Ashtanga, with the type of yoga that I do, it's very, there's a lot of hypermobility legs behind the head, very, very intense, but you will never hear a teacher tell you to get more flexible ever, mm. but you will hear teachers always telling you to get stronger because mm -hmm. you head on something that's so, when you develop that strength to push up into a handstand or, you know, even to put your legs behind your head, that takes poor strength, you know, to do a drop. Oh, I'm doing that. <laughs> Oh, girl, I'll get you. Listen, when we're, when we're able to meet up in person, I will get you into that posture and we'll take a nice picture and we'll, you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but there's something that, that switches inside of your head. And um, when you start to, not in a bad way, but like you start to understand how powerful you are because strength, anybody can get stronger. Flexibility comes and goes. Flexibility will, will, will change over time when you work it. But it also, even for women, like when you're about to get your period, you might be a little stiffer, like our hormones affect that as well. But strength is consistently going to grow if you mm. work it. And, it and it makes you and so it does kind of raise that vibrational understanding of yourself because we can't change a lot of what's going on outside of us we can't but what we can do to affect that collective consciousness is work on ourselves it's that man in the mirror that Michael Jackson sang about, right? And that, and when you start to have that confidence, which is what a lot, a lot of exercise does for people, regardless of what it is, it gives them more confidence mm. um, as their body molecularly changes. That's going to shift. That's going to help shift everything. And so I'm so glad you hit on that, Medina. And I will tell you 15 <laughs> years later, every morning when I get up to do my practice, I still debate on not doing it that day. So that doesn't change. You, you always have to have that discipline. You're always having to like force yourself to do it. But um, I it's love good that you to hear that. that. It's good to hear that because it makes, you, you, everyone can relate to that. I think it's good oh, yeah. to hear that. And the yeah, thing yeah, that yeah. keeps me going on my mat is I know one day I'm going to have to be, see my teacher again. So <laughs> that's <what> <laughs> And also it's how good you know and you feel physically, emotionally, spiritually when you've done it. And yep. my thing for this week is actually um, sleep um, to allow myself more time to rest because of what I'm doing here. Like it's late at night, be very late by the time I finish this. I'm going to allow myself to actually, if I need to have a nap during the day or something, which is something I never do because it's not really in my personality, but I'm going to concentrate for the next couple of weeks on allowing myself to get back into really good sleep patterns 
because Beautiful. you know that you need to um, you repair physically and emotionally during different sleep patterns and again I need to walk the talk and do what I say so and, we've and, and also being able to do something differently that you haven't done in a way before you know creating new neural pathways I think they talk about so you know that's really important I mean um Another thing that we're all learning to, to do now is to, to receive support when we need it, you know, and, and that's something as human beings we're not good at, at accepting support. And I know there's some people out there uh, this week working me, with me with something that is has been a bit of a challenge and they're all coming together to do some work on that for me, which is really beautiful. Um, so a particular issue that I'm working with. So um, um I, I know that um, I'm not used to um, accepting a lot of support and, and so it's something I need to practice and get better at. I'm, I'm used to giving support to others but not necessarily receiving it. So, you know, that's another thing that, that you know, creating new ways of being in the world is, is really important and breaking old patterns. Mm. And on that note, too, can I share, I've got a really beautiful uh, free PDF on my website which is a... Um, it's actually a painting and it, it, it's like a portal or an energetic um, sort of pattern that you can meditate on and, and it can help you with your energy. So I'm always trying to think of ways that I can support the audience to, to, to help with ideas. And uh, can I share this now, Catherine? Yeah. And, cool. um, it's it's um, free if you go to my website and you can just print it out and um, you can just meditate on it and it has a lot of different frequencies and energies within it, um, encodings. Um, uh, when, when I was talking to Taylor Moon the other day, she, she mentioned that, um, that the artwork has encodings. So, um, yeah, if anyone would like a copy of that, please go to my website and it's a free PDF. Um, yeah. Lovely. Well, thank you so much, ladies. I always enjoy our chat so much. Um, we will be reporting back. So next week, you'll be seeing us all sitting here with our legs behind us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bryce to, must be a miracle no, This might be, this be very rude <laughs> stories of your kids. Just maybe mute it. But I, we, we have what we call asana shots in yoga where they're postures where you put yourself and they usually they're professionally done. And it's for marketing is what it's for. Well, I had on shorts, like really short shorts. We sometimes practice on almost, almost like bathing suit shorts because it's so sweaty. And I put myself in Dwee Padishir Shasana, which is that posture with both legs behind your head. And I took the picture and I sent it to my, my best friend who is hysterical and very, very gay. So, and he goes, girl, do not post that. We do not need to see your, ah, <laughs> I won't say it on YouTube, but he was like, do not post that. Do not show that picture. We don't. We don't need to see your hoo ha. Basically, like out. And out. Well, that's so. Funny. That's what friends are for. I know, right? Like he was like, you, I don't think he said girl. I think he said the b word. He was like, do not post that. I'm gonna save you from this. Do not post that. That, that shot. Oh my god! I've always got the filter. I'm just like, my mum might see it. I, I mean, you always to see this stuff. Like in the yoga, you see it all the time. So you kind of. Like as a teacher, I don't really think about anatomy like boy or girl bits. I'm yeah. thinking about like where are their muscles going. And so I'm not even thinking about the fact that this might look pretty pornographic on, yeah. on Instagram. So <laughs> thank you, Chris, if you're watching for, for saving um, my dignity. <laughs> oh, well, on that note, we will be back for some more fun and laughter. So I really wish anyone who's watching this lots of laughter this week. I think... You all deserve it. We all deserve it. And if we all laugh as much as possible this week, the world will be a better place. Absolutely. Thank you, ladies. See you next week. You're so welcome. Bye. Bye. Bye.